Welcome to Polygon's Overview Series. My name is Charlie Hall, and I'm joined today by Mr. Squishy. Mr. Hello. Squishy, please introduce yourself. Hi there, uh, Mr. Squishy. I'm Matt, and I created Pac-Man inside of Minecraft. I'm sorry, you did what now? I created Pac-Man inside of Minecraft. Now, now this isn't the first time that we've stepped into a strange creation inside of Minecraft. We've seen The Legend of Zelda made inside of Minecraft. I went and visited a hard drive inside of Minecraft. But what do you mean you created Pac-Man inside of Minecraft? What? How? What? To what, to what extent? <laughs> so we have, we have command blocks inside of Minecraft and a really rudimentary... Uh, plugging plug-in and coding AI inside of the game. So using the features that are inside the game, and I made a custom resource pack that retextures the map to look like Pac-Man, and then using uh, resources I found online, replicated as much as possible the exact AI of the original Pac-Man game so that it runs in vanilla, no mods, no plugins required. Come on. <laughs> all right, all right. So when when we logged in you had me download a texture pack and then the the regular minecraft world changed into this bizarre like tron room that we're in right <laughs> now so well i guess tell me where i am and what i need to do well so you start off in the spawn room and this is just to make sure you downloaded it correctly if you play on single player this automatically downloads. if you're on multiplayer you can press the the no sign there and that'll get you a link to the resource pack. But once you have it all downloaded, you can just hit right click the sign that says yes, you see Pac-Man, and that'll take you to the second room. All right, I'm gonna do that now. Right click to continue. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I'll do the same. All right, your inventory slot six, seven, eight, nine, control Pac-Man. It is highly recommended that you bind your controls. So there are a couple different ways that you could have, or that I could have gone about controlling Pac-Man, and what I thought was the easiest to do was to use your hotbar slots, and that leaves you free to move around the map as you play it, to look anywhere you want to look. So uh, in order to make the controls fluid, we're going to rebind a couple of, couple of the slots. So if we hit <laughs> Escape okay. All right. and go to Options. I'm doing that now. And go to Controls. Okay. okay. And then it says now what? Now we right click the uh, right click to play sign there, and uh, once we go through the the game will start up. It's going to take commands from the the closest player. So do you want to stand back or do you want to do you want to actually play? Well, can I watch if you, you can, do it first? Yeah, you can you can watch. Sure. So I'll like, just step a little bit closer to the board. Yeah, so, give it a yeah, try. You, I want to see this. If you right click that first, then I'll come right after you. Okay. And then I'll come up a little bit closer. There we go. But you can see the the ghost will be the ghost will be going here, and we can just move around and play normally. The uh, the sound effects are all in here from the normal game, so as much as possible, it's it's a true true recreation of of Pac-Man. Oh, um, this is the cabinet. We're on the Pac-Man cabinet. Yeah. So if you you double tap space, you're put into creative mode automatically, so you can fly around and. So yeah, you can, oh, you can look fly around at, and check it out. Look at this! <laughs> so as oh, much as possible, I've tried to get all of the elements of the actual game in there. So we've got not just the sound effects, but the board is accurate using the actual sprites from Pac-Man. The, the uh, score will update there at the top. You can see the, the score toggles up, the high score toggles up when you're actually on a high score run. You can eat the ghosts, they'll return back to the center, the sound will change based on what mode everybody's in. So it's got all of the animations and the, the ghost models will update based on what direction they're turning and what direction they're facing. So That's great. As much as possible, I've tried to recreate everything that was in the original version of Pac-Man uh, into what we have here. So. Pac-Man will, as you turn corners, his model will update, so he'll always be facing the right way. The the eyes on the ghosts will update. The sound effects are all in the game and run as they should. When you eat, uh, when you eat energizers, they all turn away and run from you, and they flash. And so, as much as possible, it is a true recreation of Pac-Man. This is great. So, does it? Does it have the famous kill screen, level 257? Can you get all the way through the game? No, I, I was only able to put in one level because one of the 
One of the biggest challenges in Minecraft is that it runs at a much lower frame rate than a lot of other games. So you get essentially 20 frames per second is what the game's guts run at. So even if you get 60 frames a second on your client, the server is only going to run at 20. And Pac-Man normally would run at 60. And that's how they allow the ghost to change speeds and change directions. So between levels, they would actually slightly uh, increase the speed they were moving at. And because I couldn't, couldn't do that because we're locked at, at a much lower frame rate, I decided just to, just to stick with the one level. <laughs> all right, all right, I got to go check what's on the back of this thing. Well, we uh, did the full arcade cabinet as much as possible, so tried to stay true. The back of it's just uh, just a yellow <laughs> yellow brick wall, but <laughs> everything but the cigarette burns from right. being in a in a pizza <laughs> joint for thirty years. That's just great. Can I give it a try? Yeah, sure. All right, let's do this. So I'll I'll just step back, and you can go up to the board, and then yeah, just use your uh, up, right, down, and left arrow keys, and you should be able to to take him off. You can just put push left or right, and he should start. <laughs> oh, this is wild. So one of the things you had me do before we started was download a texture skin. So tell me more about what the texture skin does that allows you to make this look so much like Pac-Man. Sure. So the vanilla game, all the blocks have custom textures. And uh, when they released the latest version of Minecraft, they gave us a lot more customizability over what we can do. So... When you take off the texture pack and you play this map, you'll see a bunch of glass and there's coal ore and there's stone blocks and it doesn't look anything like Pac-Man. But putting on the resource pack allows you to have animated models. You can see Pac-Man's chomping away, the ghosts are wiggling away. That's all part of the resource pack. Um, being able to have the blocks move smoothly along is, is mostly controlled by the resource pack. All of the, the numbers and the letters and the board, I mean, pretty much everything that you see here is a texture that's been reskinned onto an existing block. Okay. Well, just for giggles, I'm going to turn the texture pack off, <laughs> and we're going to see what happens. Your sound is going to go haywire. Oh, is that what? Because oh, well. you've got to, I, in order to get those sounds in, I remap them onto existing sounds. So actually, I use the wither sound effects, because I figured people wouldn't spawn in withers. <laughs> I wouldn't have to worry about it. So you'll get, like, minecarts sounds, and wither sounds, and explosions, and fireworks, and... It goes kind of crazy, this but it works. Is bonkers! It's, it's totally functional without the resource pack on. Oh my god! It it doesn't look anything like Pac-Man. So you get to the <laughs> side of it, and then it totally looks like a what what the outline of a Pac-Man machine would be. Oh, that's hysterical! Oh, oh, Matt! Yep. I can see inside of it. <laughs> you can see inside of it. Yeah, when you take it off, that's where that's where all the guts are. I I kind of like right. being able to store everything in there. We're gonna we're gonna look at that in a second. But hang on, I gotta I gotta try and play Pac-Man without. Pac-Man. Here we go. <laughs> so one of the, the small features that I had. Uh, oh, make it stop. <laughs> okay, die, Pac-Man. That was like standing inside of a jet engine. <laughs> Ooh, uh, what are your sounds at? <laughs> it sounds like water coming down. Let me let me quickly kill off back <laughs> Batman, Batman Pac-Man here. Back off. Oh, let's let's go back and oh, all right, we're back. I've never wanted to kill Pac-Man as badly as I did just then. <laughs> so it was kind of a it was a fun reward once I got everything set up to take that off because I mean for most people when you take off that resource pack and you play with it, it looks like a disaster, right? The whole game breaks apart. But for me, when I look at it. I can see what's happening, right? I know what's happening through everything. So it's it's very interesting to look at here are the the block models on the armor stands are changing and the the different textures are being replaced and the blocks are being changed out and it's cool to be able to see those those elements in the vanilla game without having a, a resource pack making it look completely different. That's wild. Well, let's, can you, can we go inside the guts of the thing? We can. Let's do um, it. So we can go down here to the coin slot. Come on. As I figured was the, the best way to let you in. <laughs> so if you just fly down here and I'll, I'll make it a little bit easier to get in. So. Oh, and it, it becomes, oh, look at this. So these are all of the guts that are driving everything. 
<laughs> would now be a good time to turn the texture pack off so we can actually see what all this stuff is? Or well, does most it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter in here. Oh, okay. Um, the only things that are retextured are this uh, this yellow block and the green block. Oh, okay. And everything else is in here. Doesn't really matter what it looks like. So. All right. Well, what what what's going on here? Uh, a lot of different things. So. One of the biggest challenges in this map was making it run smoothly when without you know lagging out single player games and most people's computers. Um, so that's why there are so many different chunks of these command blocks spread out all over the place instead of them being you know all pretty and grouped together. Um, all of this is done for optimization purposes. Okay. So in terms of what's constantly running, just this one line of command blocks is always running and. All the rest of this is only triggered as needed. Um, so there's there's a lot of stuff that happens in this line. Um, I've I've gone through and labeled it, but mostly what this is controlling is it's telling having the ghosts figure out what directions can they currently move and Pac-Man what directions he can currently move. It's handling uh, moving the ghosts. It's handling changing their speeds. So like when a ghost enters a side tunnel, he slows down, or when he enters frightened mode, he slows down. Um, and it handles checking on wind conditions, and it handles some of the background sound effects. Um, and then all of these other, I think there are there are four of them that handle kind of like point events. So when you eat a dot, you can get 10 points, and there's one of these handles updating your score and uh, changing the, the block to make the dot go away and making make everything give, give you the sound effect. Uh, one of them handles the same thing for energizers. One of it handles for the cherries that spawn in, the fruit that spawn in. Okay. And then there's one for eating the ghosts. <laughs> so the, the ghost one was kind of fun to do because you you get more points the more ghosts you eat. The The first ghost is worth 200. The last one is worth 1,600. So that was a little challenge to figure out, but that was fun to do. And then some of the uh, the other things, the most complicated part of this is uh, what I labeled here the the ghost multipath movement logic oh wow. so okay. this, this is, is a big long string this is a big logic one. blocks so this is um when a ghost gets to an intersection there are essentially four different types of intersections it can either have two options to move and it can't turn back on itself so really it just has one path it can take it can have three options to move or it could have four options to move and when it has three or four options the ghost needs to decide based on where it's trying to get to right now, what's the shortest movement that I can take that gets me closest to my objective? And so that's basically what all of this is doing. Uh, whenever a ghost gets to an intersection point, it's saying, what's the fastest way for me to get to my target right now? All right, just this particular logical unit here. How long did that <laughs> take you to figure out how to do that inside Minecraft? Um, that was probably the longest section I may have spent and this is I this is version three of Pac-Man, the, the initial couple of versions I scrapped, but this is actually one of the units that I was able to to salvage from that and reuse. That probably took me maybe three or four days to to come up and refine the idea and then another three or four days to optimize it down and get it as efficient as I possibly can. Because there are there are a lot of different options for when it goes to do the calculations to actually make the game figure out what is the fastest path it takes a little bit of effort. That's wild, man. <laughs> I absolutely love it. So tell me, what do you do for a living? Teamster, bricklayer, plumber? <laughs> no, not exactly. I work for a consulting firm down in the DC area. So gotcha. I have no, no coding knowledge, no background really? in, in programming or anything. I don't know any quote unquote real programming languages. This is, I, I picked up command blocks maybe two years ago and just to mess around with them in my spare time and get out <laughs> after after two years messing around with something you figure out how to make some cool stuff oh that's rad that's totally cool so you mentioned this is your third version of this what what have you learned about pac-man in doing all of this work more than i wanted to know <laughs> <laughs> i was not really a big pac-man gamer or a big gamer in general coming into this um, and there was a there was a fantastic resource that I used uh, called the the Pac-Man dossier that somebody put together and it's basically technical documentation on how every system in Pac-Man works so I lived on that site for the two or three weeks while I was making this map um, but it was more it was more a learning experience in 
how to make Minecraft do what you want it to do. Because you're kind of limited in terms of what commands you have accessible, and you're trying to do these more complicated features and functions. Um, and you, you have to trick the game at times to get it to really behave how you want it to. So, for example, the, the first version of this that I tried out, I didn't use a resource pack. So everything was 3x3 three three chunks. The ghost was a 3x3 three three chunk. Pac-Man was a 3x3 three three chunk. Um, and the board ended up being like 120 blocks tall, and you had to stand 100 blocks away to see everything. And it was all laggy and <laughs> didn't run very well. So I think optimization is the biggest thing that I... I took away from all of this. Another question I've got for you is, well, what, what is actually happening in, in Minecraft terms to make this board move, right? When, we, when I turned the texture pack off before, and I'm mm -hmm. compelled to do it again, but not turn the game <laughs> on, um, I'm going to do it right now. We're going we're gonna to be daring resource packs. Mostly, this is this is driven by armor stands, and so armor stands are a type of entity that they added in. Um, they're they're extremely powerful for map makers. Their actual intended purpose is very simple. They're just a block that you can place down, and you can stick your armor on it. So if you had, you know, you you come home after your day of adventuring, and you hang your armor up, and it looks pretty there. <laughs> okay, virtual four by fours. Right. But for map makers, we can do a lot with these things because they they des I think um, they design them very much with with map maker functionality in mind. So you can see if you kind of look through the glass there, you can see three of them, four of them, with blocks on their heads. So those blocks, uh, when you go over to the texture pack, they're reskinned and they're resized and they're animated. And those are what the ghosts are. They're just blocks on the heads of armor stands. Get out. Okay. Okay. And then we control the animations just by moving the armor stands left and right. And because armor stands are, are entities uh, as considered by the game, we can store a bunch of variables on them. So that's how we handle calculating everything and figuring out you know, how fast they should move and where they should move. It's just by, by storing objectives there and then cycling out the blocks that are on their head uh, when we want to change their direction or change what they look like. That's great. So, and then Pac-Man himself is what down here. Yeah. So you gotta you know, kind of go around this. This backboard is a is a backup, so that when when the game is done, you can kind of clone him. But if you navigate your way around in between the boards, uh, it might be a little tough to see. But he's he's the same thing. He's another armor stand with a with a block on his head. Oh wait, here's the all right. Here's the center point. So here he is. That's that's him right there. The really? iron ore that you can see oh! through the glass. Oh, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, this is hysterical, man. And then here we are up in, I'm inside the ghost's house. This is where Pac-Man can never go. Right. He can never go inside the ghost's house. We're there right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, Matt, where'd you go? Where'd I'm you right go? behind you. Oh, yeah, okay. Matt, I really appreciate you taking the time to give us a grand tour of your Pac-Man game. This is a treat. And uh, where do you go from here? What's the next step? Well, I have a I have a couple other mini game ideas that I've been playing around with that I might recreate. Um, and I've also seen a couple comments saying people would like to see Dig Dug inside of Minecraft, another classic arcade game that I don't have a lot of experience with. But maybe if I can find some documentation on that, I might uh, go ahead and use it. And I, I discovered Twitch through part of this process, so I streamed as much as possible the entire creation process of this map so whatever i do in the future I'll, I'll probably stream it for anybody who's interested that's great well we'll drop some links to your stream and whatever other contact information you'd like into the uh, the show notes for this one but thank you matt for the tour this is polygon's overview and uh, we've got a uh, subscription links to our youtube below as well as well the rest of the site that you're on right now hope to see you soon